go. And it's a beautiful day here in Eastern Oregon. It's a little muggy out, but at the moment it's overcast and beautiful. And I've got a quartet of gorgeous plants to share with you. But today's project started with Aaron getting the lawn tractor out. And I think we just shared a look at what he did, but he took after all those big tall weeds that were right by our tomato plants on the new property. I showed you guys the other day, we went out there and we weeded in between the corn and the tomatoes because we did not leave the aisles wide enough to get the lawn tractor in there. And so I either knew like I just have to let them go and encroach on our plants or I need to get in there and just get it done by hand and it looked so much better. But as I was sizing up the other side, I thought I don't need to pull anything that's like a foot away from these plants, which I did. I got all the big weeds pulled from that side of the tomatoes. Uh, but I thought we could probably get the lawn tractor in here and take care of those. And he did that in like three minutes. <laughs> it was wonderful and it looks so much better. So we just wanted to share that we got that project done and the plants are now free to breathe. That's always a good feeling. But look at these plants. This is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna go out, we're gonna put these all in the same location because I think that they are such an interesting blend of color and texture when they're near one another. So we have the silver lining artemisia right here, which you can use as a perennial in the garden. I think it's like zone four through nine. Yeah, zone four through nine, 12 to 16 inches tall. It can spread up to three feet, uh, but you can also use this in containers as a spiller because it stays lower and it wants to spread and it adds just that beautiful glow. And then we've got the rock and grow. This is the coral jade sedum right here, which is one of my faves because I love the color of the leaves. That sagey green, it's very soft the whole color palette here. And then you get the tighter buds here are more of that like smoky, almost like a brown color. And then as they start to open, you see the deeper kind of pink and then they turn to a coral. It just has a very moody sort of vibe to me. Now these grow 16 to 18 inches tall, out about 30 inches, zone at three through nine. And you guys know sedums are just tough as nails and like hot conditions, crummy soil, they're just great. And then we've got the Dark Star Nine Bark, which was just recently sent to us. Uh, this one grows about five feet tall by four feet wide, zone four through eight, I think. Let me look. Yep, four through eight. And this variety is supposed to have really good branching. I don't have any personal experience growing this one yet, but I think that this color, especially with that silver, oh my word, it's so pretty. And then we've got the Spring Grove Arborvita, which this one, you can use it for a screen, but you have to have kind of a good size space for it because it gets, well, can't get the tag open. 15 feet wide, I think. Yeah, 12 to 15 feet wide, 25 to 30 feet tall. Zone five through eight. I just, I like the smell of arbs. I like this one. I mean, we've got the North Poles right here, which are doing really well, but that's like more of a, a narrow version. Three to five feet wide is the max on that one. This one you need to, you know, plan for more space. It's got more of an open kind of growth habit. Really have had great luck with these. We have several, I think maybe four of them out in the South Garden already, and they're doing so, so well. I thought, we should probably put some more out there. So that is the order of the day, getting all of these in the ground out in the South Garden. But my view right now is so pretty. Look at this space, you guys. When those hydrangeas are in bloom and we have an overcast moment, it's just glorious. Oh, yes. Things are just filling in beautifully and I'm loving it. We do have some 104 and 105 degree days coming our way though at the end of the 10 day. Looks like we've got three over 100, which means it's the beginning of our weeks over 100, I'm guessing. But we're not gonna think about that. We're gonna go enjoy the day. This project has already snowballed, but it's going to be so beautiful. I mean, oh my gosh, look at all of these plants together right here. I went and grabbed a couple more just because I wanted to kind of complete it in a way. So our Spring Grove Arborvita are definitely gonna be the tallest, like this is the anchor piece of this section right here. So again, like 25 feet tall, 12 to 15 feet wide, which means I might bump it back just a little bit or bump the plants forward a bit. It will take it some time to get there though. I decided to grab a second one and mirror it so that on either side of the grass pathway, even though all the perennials and shrubs and things will be different, we'll have those two pieces that match, 
which will bring some for a little bit of formality to this space. I put the three nine barks, which is our second story plant, like the one that's the second biggest, five feet tall, kind of in a, I need to space all of these a little bit better because I've got these spaced a certain distance. I want that one over there to be spaced probably a little bit further that way. And then for some intense light in this area, I brought this Japanese, uh, what is it called? Yeah, Japanese silver grass grows six feet tall by five feet wide. This is like the one we have up in our front flower bed. It's kind of shrouded by hollyhocks at the moment. That next to this, oh, it's gonna be so great. And that kind of counts as a yellow. So when we're doing a new area in the landscape, we look for the four colors, red, blue, yellow, and green. We've got everything right here. So we've got the green with the arborvita and the sugar shack button bush, which grows about three to four feet tall and wide. So that's our next step down from the nine barks. We've got our red with the nine barks and kind of our red with the sedum as well. And then we've got our blue with the artemisia and then our yellow with the Japanese silver grass and it all just looks so beautiful together. So other than shifting these plants just a little bit spacing wise, like maybe bumping the sedums forward a bit and repositioning nine barks a tad, I think we're ready to go. And I love it. I love it around this pathway. What a fun project. And you know what? I was gonna use the shovel to not upset the mulch out here, but this is all in such a concentrated area. I think I'll just use the auger and make a little bit of a mess. And then that will allow, cause we kind of make a mess when we run drip anyway, there's no drip on this side. So we're gonna have to run that and then we'll remulch over the top of all of it. I think that will be actually the most efficient way. This one I'll use the shovel for, cause I wanna not make a mess over there. So here we go. You guys, getting these plants in the ground makes me so excited for this area. I just want to keep on going. Look at how beautiful that spot is. I mean, given the fact that there wasn't anything there just a minute ago, this is going to be so, so pretty. So I ended up swinging the nine bark that I had over here. I put it in this area instead. I mean, it looks really pretty just to kind of have the, all three of them close by. But what I was thinking as I was starting to dig the hole over here is that I do have an opportunity about where it was at to put something else large. So either another evergreen or a small ornamental tree or something like that. I didn't want to have to move that shrub knowing that that's probably what I'm going to do here. I'm just excited about the layering here and all the colors and the textures. I did run into a drip line when I was digging this hole right here. I had to actually go get a coupler because I cut the line in half. I didn't run into it in any other area I was digging in, so I have no idea where the drip line starts or where it ends. I'm hoping Paul remembers. But either way, we'll get the drip run to this whole area and then we'll remulch the whole spot. I think that that was much easier to do. It is pretty hard pan here though, so you'll notice if I get in here close that I did leave the root balls sort of high because I know that we're going to be mulching as well. And because the water tends to 
just like the soil tends to hang on to the water in this area, I think having the root ball high is going to benefit the plants. And then swinging over this way, you can see the matching arborvita. And we'll just, you know, continue to develop this flower bed here to where in the end, you won't really see these rock pathways. And that's kind of the goal. I mean, they are beautiful right now, which is amazing, uh, but I want them to be kind of little secret avenues through the flower garden. Those rock pathways though, boy, they add a tremendous amount. I was noticing though, that our layering over here and color looks so good. That's the back in black sedum. And then we've got a purple Veronica, Niagara Falls Panicum. These are all Arctic fire dogwood. So bright red stems in the winter. That firefly peach sky yarrow. The pollinators are just going crazy over here. I don't know if you guys can see all that movement, all the activity. It's not just honeybees. I mean, there's all kinds of things over here. Then we've got the cat's meow, nepeta, and nine barks over here. Those are the ginger wine. Nine barks, just really pleased with it. These geraniums need to be cut back at this point. <laughs> They've already bloomed. They are a nice green accent. Uh, the, there's a few of them here that look like they're struggling a little bit. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of plant tone and just hope for the best. But even as we move this way, you know, there's a daylily in here. There's echinacea, Russian sage. There's a beautiful uh, double kind of echinacea back there that's bright yellow. Oh, look at this. And I feel like today's plantings are just a continuation of all the beautiful things. So very pleased with it. And you guys, that is gonna do it for today's project. Super happy to have the weeds under control, managed in the new property, and very happy to have these plants in the ground and really excited to show you as they develop and fill in like this other side where all the perennials are just, you know, on their second, may, uh, most of them are on their second year. Some of them are on their third, uh, but they are just coming into their own and boy, it's just satisfying. Love it. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.